there's a certain tension with this portal being open while spring practice is still going on for many teams around the country. Do you feel that tension at all? And how are you just kind of dealing with that entire, that entire overlap? I don't think we're like feeling tension. I think it's just reality. And so we're just like moving forward in the space that we're in, trying to focus on what we're doing right now and not the possibles, the eventuals, the maybes, the ifs. Like, what do we know? We know we have practice today and it's really important and we need to get everything we can out of this opportunity. And I think our team's done a great job of that. Do you wish that maybe in the future that it doesn't align with spring ball? I don't know if you, I don't know if, you know, I don't, first of all, I don't think they're going to ask my opinion. Um, <laughs> man, y'all are going to need to laugh around here. Jesus. Um, uh, no, yeah, I, I think, uh, I do think there's going to be a lot of conversation around, uh, you know, from, from every level of football about how we can better structure the calendar. That's been a two year conversation with the onset of the portal and like all these things. And so I think there, I think there is going to be a, um, you know, I, th I think it just, there's a couple of things. I think it really impacts the quality of life of everybody in college football, not just the players and not just the coaches, but everybody and every person in between support staff, you know, it's just it's some of that. So um, I don't know the best way forward. And I know, you know, there's going to be a lot of people talking about that over the next six months because everybody's just trying to find the best way to, to really have a clean calendar and, you know, know exactly what we're doing, what time of year we're doing it, what the expectations are, how it's going to flow. For you know, guys who are in the portal now, maybe looking to come to, to Arizona, if you put yourself in their perspective and they're on a visit, what are they seeing here in Arizona? I think they're seeing a team that loves being together. I, I, I think this place is always going to be about development and it's going to be about being something, being part of something bigger than yourself. And if you want to do that, then you're going to love it here. If it's all about you and all about the money, then you probably ain't going to end up here, probably not going to end up here. And that's okay. You know, football is still the ultimate team sport that was ever created, in my opinion. And you need people that are willing to be a part of a team and willing to bust their butt every day to like give to the greater good or give to the brotherhood here. And I think that's what you're going to get here. And I think when you're around our players, when you're around our coaches, when you're around just the whole city of Tucson, that's what you're going to feel. You know, that bear down brotherhood is everywhere and it's, and you can feel it. And I think that's a really special thing. And we're going to fight to hold on to that every way we can. Matt, uh, Matt Atkins said something to the effect of part of spring is about breaking down barriers and getting to know players on a more personal level. Why is that important to you as a head coach and, and how do you go about that? Well, I think the better they know me and the better I know them, the, the, the better we can be for each other. Like the, more, the better I can coach them, the better I can support them on their journey. Um, the more honest they'll be with me, the more they trust me, and the, the, more, the more they'll trust our coaching and our philosophy and how we're moving forward as a program together, you know, after the departure of their last head coach. And so absolutely, and, and we've always done so much of that with our team, with our teams at San Jose State. You know, a lot of that came from Coach Tomey. Like he was a big team building guy. I would say like maybe one of the guys at the real forefront of that. And that's always been a huge part of me. And so I, the, the more connected we are, the more committed we become. And so how do we find ways to build connection and, and do everything, you know, where we support each other, we care about each other, but we're still trying to play great football and be competitive as we can in the practice environment on game day. Going into the final week of spring ball, how has the, the defense progressed? I think our defense is flying around. I think it's a fun group. Okay, wow. Um, I'm really, really impressed with uh, just the, the way that coaching staff is coming together. I think uh, we've got really good young coaches on that side of the ball, and then we have obviously kind of the wisdom and the knowledge and the intensity of Coach Aquina, which just is a, is a great element to add to your practice environment, just his experience. And then also you have Coach Gonzalez, right, who's called a lot of games, a lot of big games and a lot of situations. And he kind of brings a fun element to it um, from what his background is. And, and so I think they're, they're really coming together nice. And, and you can see, I, I think uh, when you're in spring practice, you don't ever want it to be too lopsided. It, there needs to be a little back and forth, like you need to trade punches. It can't be all, you know, one side of the ball or the other, because if that's the case, you're going to have some real trouble in the fall. And I think there's been awesome days for both sides of the ball. There's been awesome moments for each side of the ball in the scrimmages or in the teamwork. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about how they're coming along, though. It's a really go ahead. You decided on the format for spring game. Are you doing a traditional uh, pick two teams? Or is it no, it's not going to be traditional because we're still just trying to fill out the roster. You know, so we're not going to be able to have like, you know, 
a blue team and a red team. So it's going to look a little bit more like a practice with a scrimmage element in there some way, you know, kind of maybe even similar to today. But, you know, obviously there's some structure we have to build into it for television and the Pac-12 network and all that stuff. How do you pronounce the first name of your general manager? Geiska. What is the story of, of him joining your organization? Did you know him before? Did you reach out to him? What does he bring to you? So I was familiar with him before because he worked at UNLV, and I thought in a short window they had built a really strong roster in our conference, right? And um, so, and then he left there and he went to Western Michigan when they had a head coaching change. And so when I talked to the people that he worked with at both places, they were just blown away by how good they thought he was. and how much value he added to their programs. And, uh, and you know, and then we interviewed a handful of guys and, and the conversation that we had with him was outstanding. Like he knocked it out of the park. Like all the things, all the concerns I had, like he was all over. And uh, it was really, really impressive. And he's been great so far. How do you feel about the offensive line depth right now? Guys that are kind of... Yeah, yeah, we got, we got some guys that are, you know, up, down, back, so... We're a little bit thin there right now, and so we're going to be smart about how we practice the next few days. But also, I think, you know, this is the fourth quarter of spring practice, and we need to attack this these next three practices with everything we got because then we have such a huge break before we actually get back rolling again. So uh, these these practices are, are critical for our for our process and our development. Yeah, and, uh, in the summer, it's is it all player led stuff? Can, can yeah. happen. You don't you don't get any hours together. You can, but then you would have to you would have to subtract from the strength and conditioning. Okay. So that's a philosophical philosophical question that some people choose to and some people choose not to, depending on. The, the I'm going to trust the strength and conditioning staff to get them ready to play. Uh, T, is T Mac okay? I saw that he left practice today. We'll find out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll find out. Um, any other receivers that have stood out to you outside of you know T Mac and Montana? Oh, I, I I thought we had some good good plays by by Kevin Green today. Um, I think Malachi has been you know a real you know development this spring. It's been fantastic. I, I think that group is really good, and and I think uh, you know I give Coach Cummings credit you know because he was kind of a guy that I worked with for a long time, and uh, he built a really good group of, of players in that room, and we're excited about all of them. You know, I, I think we're going to have a really strong receiving core, and to to support um, you know our quarterback and you know, that, that offensive front. And then, and then when you combine that with the tight ends, I think that we're going to have an offensive skill group that we should feel pretty excited about. And then how do you think the, question. How do you think the quarterbacks are adjusting to the, the coach to player communication? It's funny, I, get, I keep getting asked that question. Everyone, uh, it seems to be a big topic of conversation. Uh, I, I got asked it twice today. It's really like not even a, a big deal, you know? Uh, and maybe because it's practice, I think that I think that right that it's probably going to feel different on game day, um, you know, getting used to that, right? Um, but uh, you know, I think it's good that we're doing it because everyone has like you know all these there's all these you know arguments about s stealing signals and like like all that stuff that's like been going on in college football for forever, and so um, everybody had to get all creative with how they communicated what was going on in the field. So I think it's going to be great that way, and you know, I'm interested to see like like. Is, is it plain and simple the only benefit that you don't have to signal plays anymore? All right, that's our time. All right, guys. Good to see you all. Appreciate it.